All right, folks, Mac T here, and we are going to be measuring our carbon monoxide. And you'll see this here on this meter, and what it is is an air pump carbon monoxide detector, and I have already done a run testing the inside of the Ford Edge with this pump. This thing sucks the air through it and measures the carbon monoxide, and I had a zero parts per million reading. Now, just keep in mind, uh, the EPA says nine parts per million is their level they want to achieve. And then, of course, we have uh, uh, another 35 parts per million for NIOSH, National Institute of Safety and Health. And then OSHA has it set up at 50 parts per million over an eight-hour workday, time-weighted across the averages, just so you know some measurements here. Uh, but really, we want it to be zero, right? And it is zero right here. But I'm going to show you how many parts per million of carbon monoxide your Ford Edge puts out. As you can see, this is what the reading is. We are at zero. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the uh, probe into the tailpipe. And we'll see what our carbon monoxide level is on a warm Ford Edge and under idle. Now you can watch what this actually says. Okay? As you can see, it is going very fast. There's a lot of carbon monoxide in there. Now, keep in mind, my meter taps out over 2,000 parts per million. So, it may tap out over that. We don't know. Let's see if these catalytic converters will help keep it down. But it looks like we're going to exceed 2,000 parts per million. Oh, it leveled out. Okay, the, the air pump and catalytic converter system is in operation, and we are running 17. Now it's going to go down, which is not abnormal for this to happen. I have this happen a lot when I do other testing, uh, especially for engines. It'll peak out, air pumps and everything kick in, and then of course it will measure out and level out. And it may even go back up again, but we'll wait and see what it does. Keep in mind this is the 3.5 liter normally aspirated V6 on a 2011 Ford Edge. And this is of course, uh, we're leveling out it looks like, 1186, it's going to go back up. As you can see the air pump constantly changes the volume. And this is, like I said, not abnormal. I see this a lot when I'm measuring uh, industrial equipment and other things. So sometimes you just got to let it read and then settle down a little bit and then try to average it out just a bit. But overall this this is a pretty good reading for a gasoline engine. Uh, really uh, you're not going to get a whole lot better than this as far as your carbon monoxide uh, parts per million readings. Uh, I have a lot of industrial equipment I check and it does run way above what my meter can do. So uh, this is really pretty good in uh, my opinion. So we'll just let it sit here and run just a bit and uh, see where it levels out at as far as our actual carbon monoxide readings. We're going to drop back down again. And keep in mind the AC is on so of course it's going to make it go up and down as the AC cycles on because it throws more fuel into it and then it drops off and then the fuel goes down so the AC just turned off I think or it turned on one of the two so the get it's gonna go back up so you can see how the AC can affect your carbon monoxide readings also because it throws more fuel at it when the AC cycles on and that causes it to have more carbon monoxide then when it cycles off it drops back down again so like I said this is pretty normal for how you're gonna see your edge and we can all pretty much uh, safely assume that we're going to run between 800 and 1,000 on, uh, on our carbon monoxide for our Ford Edge under normal operating conditions. You let me know if it goes up. Got it. Is it still reading zero? Yeah. Okay. That is what reads carbon monoxide. Nope. Still zero? Yeah. You want it to stay at zero. But if it turns one? We'll be alright. Okay. But, well. but I want to know if it does change. What about ten? If it goes to ten, then that's getting worse. Okay. If it goes to 300, let us know. We'll have to roll the windows down. Oh! 
Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> We're gonna die in here with the air. I'm gonna, and then later on when I'm old, and it's gonna be like it's gonna affect my health. It's gonna help. Is it still zero? Yeah. Well, then you're alive. Yeah. Yay. Uh, I hope this car does not blow up. It's not gonna blow up. <laughs> still zero. Zero. That means your car is still good. I am now in my 2011 Ford Edge and I have the probe in between the seats pointing towards the back of the car. I don't know if you guys can see it back there, but it's sticking out. And of course, I am going to test mine out on a loop. Wide open throttle on the interstate on ramp and going on a loop and uh, we're going to test it to see what it does. So let's get this ball rolling, so to speak. Okay, folks, uh, did have a little bit of a run in here. The machine shut off, but just before it shut off, I started reading some carbon monoxide here in town. And I'm going to explain why I'm reading carbon monoxide in my car in town. Okay? Uh, there's a valid, valid reason why this is happening. So I'm going to go ahead and pull over here real quick and let this meter settle down and I will explain at the end. I have got my edge with the back tailgate ajar. So we're going to see if we get any carbon monoxide going into the back through the hatch with it latched but not latched all the way. So let's see if we get anything. You can hear my uh, edge beeping as I'm going down the road. But we'll see if we got any carbon monoxide. And then, of course, once I get to my next destination, we will uh, do another test with the hatch completely open while I'm driving down the road. Well, as you can see, I have the back hatch open. And we're going to go ahead and see what kind of uh, carbon monoxide levels will happen when we're driving the edge with the hatch open. Now technically it should swirl up around and this should actually increase. I am betting it does once I get going here because uh, carbon monoxide will enter the vehicle. Uh, but I could be wrong. There we go. Just like I predicted. With the hatch open we're starting to get some carbon monoxide coming into the vehicle. So let's see what we got going on here. This is why, folks, you don't put kids in the back of a pickup truck either with a camper shell on it and the back open for air ventilation because you will get carbon monoxide into the back. So as you can see, I am getting small amounts of carbon monoxide in the back. With the rear hatch open. Nothing great. And we generally don't drive our edge with the hatch open like this. But it comes and goes. Depending on what's going on. Not much is entering. Now we're climbing back up again, as you can see. It all depends how fast you're going and wind and everything else as to how it's going to affect your edge and getting uh, any type of uh, carbon monoxide in it. So I'm going to park and let it run for a second. 
see if we get anything coming in. And I doubt there will be. Now carbon monoxide is an odorless, colorless gas, folks. So you cannot smell carbon monoxide. You can't see carbon monoxide. So if you say that you are smelling something, just keep in mind you are smelling the byproducts of combustion of other impurities in gasoline or hydrocarbons that your edge is burning. Uh, the gas, the hall, ethanol, uh, the, the gasoline, the diesel, uh, oil, everything else that's getting sent out that tailpipe. So you cannot smell carbon monoxide, which does make it a deadly gas uh, in the fact that you don't know it's affecting you until maybe it's too late. So just to clear that up on some of the physical and uh, chemical properties of carbon monoxide so that we can be clear about what we're actually measuring. Uh, the device that I used was a Bacharach Monoxor 3 and it is a pump. In other words, it sucks the air in almost like an aquarium pump through a sensor that detects carbon monoxide. Uh, now, just I don't want to get in the weeds on this thing, but just rest assured, it's what fire departments and uh, utility companies and everybody uses to detect carbon monoxide. And uh, it is a very good piece of equipment to determine how it is affecting you. Now, going forward, let's talk about uh, some other aspects of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide uh, while driving near Ford Edge. Here's the thing, folks you will be getting carbon monoxide into your engine or into your compartment of your car. Your Ford Edge will have it in. While you're running your environmental system, in other words, you have your AC on, your heat, or anything else like that, it will draw air that is from the outside. Well, guess what? You're parked at a stoplight or whatever it may be. You're surrounded by other cars that are running you will get carbon monoxide into your engine uh, compartment and sucked into your air, air intake of your uh, environmental system, in other words, your AC and heat, and then it will recirculate into your car. It's that simple, folks. So the cars around you are kicking out all this carbon monoxide, which is why you saw my carbon monoxide levels go up when I was in city driving because the cars around me were kicking it out through their tailpipes and my intake system for my uh, cooling and heating was sucking it into the vents and blowing it around inside the compartment. That is as simple as it gets, folks. Carbon monoxide mix red mixes readily with air. It just mixes just perfect because it is the same you know you know weight as air so therefore it does mix readily so why did it go up because other cars were around me that's the only thing so it went up two three four parts per million no big thing there uh, it's not going to affect you in that as in that aspect even for an eight hour work day uh, but uh, you always want to aim for zero but you're not going to get it driving in town Okay, I guarantee every one of you are exposed to carbon monoxide while you're driving your cars in city conditions with a bunch of traffic around you. It's going to be a fact of life. If you don't like it, move out to the country and don't drive a car. It, you can't get away from it. Your heaters, your furnaces, anything that runs a hydrocarbon in your home has a potential to do the same thing to you. So that is a fact of life. But as you saw, both my 2011 Ford Edges did not have any carbon monoxide coming into them to speak of. Uh, when I drove my wife's all the way through even town, uh, there was light traffic, so hers didn't even register anything. Okay? Mine was in heavier traffic in town. You know, there's 40, 50 cars around me, so it, it stands a reason why it went up. But... Uh, overall, if you are having complaints that you are getting carbon monoxide and you can smell it in your car, it ain't carbon monoxide, folks. Sorry. It's probably coming in through your vents if you're in heavy traffic. Uh, I ran my Ford Edge with the hatch slightly ajar. No carbon monoxide. I ran the hatch open and I barely got over five parts per million carbon monoxide with the hatch open. Uh, 
I don't know what to say. If some of you are having problems, it might be a defect in the, in your edge. Maybe they're trying to do it. Or maybe those vents that are behind the bumper covers are blocked open with some sort of uh, material, dirt, debris, leaves, sticks, twigs. I don't know on that. Uh, but it might be worthwhile to see if they're clean and get up underneath there and check them out. Uh, but overall, uh, I did a test. You guys saw it. And... Uh, you know, maybe your results are different than mine, but keep in mind, I had two Ford Edges to test it on, okay? So, we know for a fact now what the results are, and I do hope this uh, does help clarify some things about carbon monoxide. Getting into your Ford Edge and some of the complaints that were uh, registered with uh, TSB on this. So, I do want to make sure that uh, we get this clarified. And with that being said, uh, this is Mac T, and of course I do want you to join up here on the Facebook page. By all means, join the Facebook page, folks. It is full of facts and information and files that are all free for your using, and also advice uh, to help you do your own work and save a few of these uh, ducats, as they say. Uh, also, don't forget to uh, subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button and, of course, get notified of all the new videos that I put out. And, of course, uh, make sure that you do uh, hit that like button when you do see it. I know a few of you hit the dislike button. I can't please everybody all the time. So, therefore, uh, we'll just move on forward with that. But, as with all things, I do have Mercy Grill here who's going to toss a couple one-liners at you, so enjoy that music. But last but not at least, both my feet hit the floor this morning. I'm having a great day, and I want you to have a great day, too.